I mentioned in the fourth segment of one of my podcasts of last week, uh, talking about how Stephen Curry hinted at a possibility of challenging uh, the woman who holds the WNBA three-point record. Or actually, no, not the WNBA. There we go. That's, that's actually much better lighting. Hold on. All right. There we go. Figured it out. Figured out how I want to sit. Thank you. So, anyway, back to what I was saying. Um, recently, uh, Stephen Curry was caught on the... Um, on the sidelines in the uh, shoot around asking to see like uh, who holds the three point shooting contest record and it turns out to be a WNBA player Sabrina Ionescu she holds the record for uh, most points in a three point shooting contest not just for NBA but for um, the WNBA not just for WNBA but for NBA as well which is very 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 impressive if you are um, Jesus this lighting is so bad it's not even funny um, of course, uh, they did the right. Um, right after my podcast from yesterday, they made this an official thing for the team um, and for the for the All Star break. Of course, they did it right after my podcast. It's just the, the timing is just the worst. I cannot stand it. I, it's so unlucky. And they came up with a format and everything. Uh, they'll follow the standard three point shooting contest rules of four racks, four ball racks, um, with a money ball at the end. Uh, an all money ball rack, along with uh, two Sari ranged uh, deep threes. Like you know, those are the those are the ones where you shoot like at the hash. The deep threes. Uh, the game ball is worth one. The money ball is worth two, and the deep three is worth three. So Steph will shoot from the NBA three point line and use an NBA ball, while Sabrina will use a WNBA ball um, and use the WNBA three point line. At least that's what the format on ESPN had planned. Sabrina. Had other ideas, however. She followed up with another tweet saying, I'll use the NBA three-point line, which would eliminate all WNB which would eliminate all the WNBA haters, like she used the WNBA ball and she shot closer. Like you know how they you know how they'd get. But um so we will see if like the NBA decides to like release another report right after um, this podcast saying, uh, oh, she will be using uh, the NBA three-point line because she's accepted to do so. I'm personally very excited for um, this matchup. This will be the first time ever where there's any type of competition between NBA and WNBA players. Um, and it's about time, honestly. Like The WNBA players have been arguing for years about how they deserve um, similar, um, similar revenue with um, the money that they're making in the league and um this brings in a lot of question and like a lot of people don't necessarily like agree with it simply because of like how um how the WNBA plays like when guys play like um I know a lot of people like they they don't go to the games like to the WNBA games um but instead of blaming like the league for not like playing you why don't you just blame the fans for not like supporting you like here's my problem I'm I'm in college Obviously, like you guys know that, and I have a lot of. Um, I go to a lot of sporting events here. Uh, when the guys play, I see like all of their friends, like in the stands cheering for them. Even when the sport might not be popular, all of their fans, are, all of their friends, are still there to root for them every step of the way. And obviously, like if you're good, more people are going to notice this, and more people are going to show up. But when I go to women's games, I don't see any of their friends like in attendance whatsoever. Like. I see a few of them, yeah, but like they already play a women's sport, so it doesn't really count because they already get um, how like the viewerships of these games and crowd attendances are a bit met. So it's like it's it's I don't I don't really want to say it doesn't count, but at the same time it sort of doesn't because they understand like why aren't the women's going to why aren't women friends going to support their fellow women in these games? Like there's also the st like there's also the stereotype that like women aren't as fun to watch as the men and just going off of what I, I typically see, like from what I see from WNBA basketball, it isn't really like that particular, it wasn't that particularly fun to watch. And there isn't really like any highlight plays that go on in those games and like that are being made in those games. And the, the fact that like a lot of them can't dunk is also a major entertainment factor that's like, that is just completely lost like for basketball. like. Dunking is a major part of basketball, and a lot of fans like to see dunks, especially old heads. And they lo they love it when like someone just dunks over a huge defender, like that's just sitting in the paint, and it doesn't matter. Like you know, he just soars over him. But in the WNBA, 
they can't do that, which is a little bit of a vibe kill, if you ask me. Like, because I would really love to see a woman just go up and throw down a junk right over, right over any center's head. Like, it's very odd seeing a layup on a wide open fast break, and I'm used to seeing nice dunks or just any dunk, really. I think Caitlin Clark coming into this is going, she's like, she's going to be their messiah, so eventually, like, viewership will pick up. Uh, and that's another thing not present in the WNBA, which is a player who could take over a game like her and put up ridiculous stats like her. Like, you don't really have many highlight-level players, like, in the WNBA, if that, makes, if that makes sense. Like, you don't really see these ridiculous box scores in the WNBA like you do um, in the NBA. So that's another major entertainment factor because it's like these players are doing something that, like, no one has ever seen before, in the NBA, but like the WNBA is sort of like, eh, it's remaining the same. Uh, but this talk about the NBA and WNBA athletes has been going on for years. Like it's been going on for a while. It dates all the way back to seven years ago when Brittany Griner uh, said that she could beat DeMarcus Cousins in a 1v1. I'm sure a lot of people that who, who aren't, who didn't just start watching NBA like recently know exactly like what I'm talking about uh, because this did happen seven years ago. Um, if you don't, if you don't remember what happened, what was what the league was like seven years ago, um, I'll remind you real quick. This is Prime Boogie. This is um, I can't move my head down because they won't see me. This is Prime Boogie. This is the undisputed best center in the league, Boogie. This is twenty seven and eleven per game, Boogie, and she thinks that she can beat him in a one v one. Obviously. Every NBA athlete was taking Cousins aside. KD was like, I like the confidence, BG, but I don't think that's going to happen. And Cousins said, I'm glad she's confident in her abilities, but it's also a little delusional. So you might say there's a lot of like bias with, um, um, with these NBA players, but the real crazy part is um, when they're... The WNBA coach said this. Um, if there was no referee, I'm going to go to the ATM, I'm going to sell my house, and I'm going to put all my money on DeMarcus Cousins. This was, this was the WNBA coach. This was the WNBA, not, not WNBA, uh, the Women's USA basketball coach that said this to... And in, to a reporter that was questioning them about like these um, about her claim, this was her coach. So the fact that her coach said this really speaks on the talent that Demarcus Cousins had at the time, and the amount of talent that these NBA players have compared to WNBA players. Like he is that confident in Demarcus Cousins being able to being able to beat her. I thought it was insane, but he is a coach, so he knows more about basketball than a lot of people do. So he won two gold medals for Team USA. So he knows his stuff. With with all of this in mind, like this matchup will be huge. Like Steph Curry's um oh god, the lights just went out. Hold on, give me one second. It's weird. I guess they thought no one was in this room. Wow. Anyways, uh, back to what I was saying. Um, if Steph ends up losing this game, like, this could seriously damage his legacy. Like, really, really damage his legacy. Like, he's no, he has that reputation of, like, the greatest shooter on planet Earth and the greatest shooter that God made. So if he loses to um, WNBA player, like, I'm not going to say, like, it's bad because, like, you, you can lose to anyone. There's nothing wrong with losing. But it's, like, it's just going, if he lost to anyone in the league, it's, like, it's going to damage him. Like, and not only that, but um, if Steph does end up losing, which I don't think he will, um, this could bring in a, a surge of, like, WNBA viewers. Like, this might bring a lot of attention. Like, wow, this woman was able to beat Stephen Curry in a three-point contest? That's amazing. And, like, they'll all just go ahead and, like, they'll tune into the games. And with Caitlin Clark uh, coming in, this is just the beginning. Like, she'll spark... Um, what makes like um, other W the show spark W and other WNBA athletes and like other women to like try to play as a sport and try to compete with her and like increase the overall skill level of these WNBA teams maybe even expand the the league like who knows 
Uh, let me know in the comments uh, who you guys have winning this contest. My money's on Steph, though not to completely talk down on the WNBA or its athletes. Um, she does hold the record for the most for the most points in a three-point shootout. So we'll see if um, it was just her night or if she's really like that. Then again, Steph could also just randomly start missing. I don't think that will happen given by what I saw from him last year. That was just unbelievable shooting from him and like I think what would be a really crazy ending is if they both end up tying and um, they both end up like sharing the win like that would be really cool but um, I heard that I also heard a hot take from someone saying that um, Steph might just let her win to just increase like the WNBA viewership I don't think that's gonna happen because like I wanna I think that they really like they really want to find out like who's the better shooter and it's fun it's like it's it's for all-star weekend like this is this is great like I I feel like we should do like I feel like the league should do more of this obviously like they wouldn't do like um I don't think they would do like a full NBA team versus a full WNBA team I wish but maybe like maybe a three-on-three like, um, uh, I know that they have, um, like, the big three show where they do 3v3 basketball. So maybe for, like, for all-star break, they could do, like, a three-on-three. -three. Who knows? Like, that would, be, that would be really cool to see. But um, with that, we are out of time for the, uh, for the second segment. Um, I'm going to be uh, taking a short break once again. And I will see you in the third segment where I go ahead and I recap um, the rest of the games that happened from last night and see if there is a better spot to sit in this room. So I will be right back. <laughs> 